Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the Anime Breakdown. My name is Fraud on the Telly. Welcome to our latest episode, Breakdown of Demon Slayer. Season 2, Episode 14, Transformation, Entertainment District, Arc. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Let's crack on! So when we last left off in Demon Slayer, Tanjiro had just exhausted himself after too many uses of his Hinokami Kagura, or Sun Breathing. Nezuko has come to his aid and in a fit of rage transformed herself into her ascended demon form, which is just, uh, wow. Why do they have to make her so hot? I don't even want to get on the internet right now to see what was done to our sweet girl. Nezuko in her ascended form is crazy strong. Her healing abilities surpass even that of Daki, who is supposed to be a member of the upper six. Nezuko's kicks seem to have grown in power and force as she repeatedly kicks the shit out of her up and down this town. Nezuko as well in her new form can use a t technique of demon blood art magic, specifically a fire ability that seems to only harm demons and prevent them from healing quickly. Nezuko also has the ability to congeal her blood so that she can control limbs that are removed from her body. Not gonna lie, I had a mini heart attack when her head just got lopped off. Thank God though, she's okay. It's hard to know at this point why Nezuko is so strong for being a demon that has never devoured a human. It's likely due to Muzan being her creator as a demon, but as anime watchers, we're just gonna have to wait to find out. Side note, I love all of Nezuko's physical attacks or kicks. As someone who practices Muay Thai, I have a true love for shin to face action, so this little detail is great. Tanjiro is awakened by a dream in which he is told if he doesn't help his sister, she'll never be the same again. Right on cue, as it seems Nezuko is about to devour an innocent human, Tanjiro shows up and begins trying to calm his sister down. To little avail. Of course, in classic anime timing, Daki shows up, her face looking hella f***ed, and puts Tanjiro in a predicament. Let Natsuko go and attempt to save the humans, or continue to try to calm his sisters down and potentially let them die. Well, luckily for Tanjiro, Pinkin Uzui shows up, looking flashy as ever, to save the day. He tells Daki to buzz off, she can't possibly be an upper ranked demon because of how weak she is. She's stunned at this statement as her head just falls into her lap. God damn it, he's so flashy. Nezuko launches her and Tanjiro out of the building to the streets below. Just when it seems Tanjiro is going to give up on Nezuko and her humanity is gone, Isui's words ring true in Tanjiro's ears. Just be unflashy and sing her a lullaby. Tanjiro sings her a song that her mother would sing to them when they were younger, which seems to awake the humanity inside of her. She breaks down crying until her transformation reverts, sending her from hot demon lady to tiny child, and now I'm just confused about life. Back to Isui and Daki. Daki, with her head still in her hands, is throwing a temper tantrum at her seemingly lack of power at being an upper-ranked demon. Mysteriously, though, even though her head was removed, she hasn't been destroyed. Suddenly, she screams out for her brother, and we get this horrifying scene as another demon just emerges from her back. Isui goes for the kill, but his attack is deflected. This new demon is Daki's brother, Gyotaro. It is revealed that these two together make up the upper class demon Uisui has been searching for. And together they've killed over 15 Hashira. Gyotaro seems to be the stronger of the two demons as he heals his sister seemingly with no effort and is able to parry Isui's lightning fast attacks like they are nothing. Personality wise, he's a super interesting demon. He shares the sadistic tendencies of all demons, but seems to have a loathing for those he perceives act superior to him. A remnant from his time when he was human and how he was treated poorly by the upper class of y Yoshiwara. He often complimented an opponent while trying to kill them, mocking his enemies as he watches them die. We see this in his interaction with Isui here. He doesn't seem to like the guy that much. He also wields these menacing sickles. He also can perform a blood magic technique where he summons blades made of blood that fly and attack his opponents. Isui and the demon do battle, we get this awesome scene where he throws three of these ninja bomb and launches them upward with his blade in this crazy 360 ceiling. This scene was just animated so freaking well, it's probably one of the most memorable scenes in this whole episode to me. The bombs are sent flying upward through the building to the sibling demons, where they explode! The episode ends with both demons unscathed, Daki has used her belts to create a protective ball around the two. It seems the fight has just begun as the brother and sister together are at their full power. Tanjiro and the gang are going to have their hands full with this fight, it seems. And that was it for episode 7, Transformation of the Entertainment District Arc. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Go check out our Attack on Titan episode breakdowns, as well as our other anime videos, like why Attack on Titan is the Game of Thrones of anime. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. 
Thank you for watching my video. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace, love. Adu.